In 2016, in this country, nearly 1,500 people or individuals lost their lives as a result of drug overdose. And as you all know, historically, opioids have made up the vast majority of those deaths. So in the 1990s, it was heroin. In the last decade and this decade, there's an increasing contribution from prescription opioid analgesics. But over the last decade, we've seen this increase in another class of opioids, and that's the fentanyls, and uh, fentanyl itself, and of course, fentanyl analogues. And so this graph, this is deaths annually in Australia, unintentional deaths associated with fentanyl or fentanyl analogues. And you can see that in the last 10 years, the numbers have increased quite markedly, up to near 150 uh, in 2016. So I'm just going to start with a little bit of an overview of fentanyl to make sure we're on the same page. As you all know, it's a synthetic opioid agonist. Uh, it has a structure that's quite different from heroin and morphine, the naturally occurring opiates, but it's a potent mu receptor agonist. That means that it's a very good analgesic, but it also produces euphoria, which is one of the reasons it's misused, and quite potent respiratory depression. It's highly lipophilic. That means it can get across lipid barriers when you give it it gets straight into the central nervous system, producing a rapid effect. And it's more potent than both morphine and heroin. So 100 times more potent than morphine and 40 to 50 times more potent than heroin. Fentanyl itself was first synthesized in 1959, shortly after became a, a approved for use as an analgesic. In 1972, it was approved for use as an intravenous anesthetic. But in 1964, in response to some information that suggested it was being misused, it was scheduled under the single Convention of Narcotics Drug Act as a Schedule I drug. And then in the 90s and the, and the noughties, other preparations were developed to allow it to be used in the outpatient setting, because earlier on it was just used in the hospital, it was given intravenously, and not really available in the community. So recreational use of fentanyl and fentanyl analogues is very topical at the moment, but in fact it dates from the 70s, 80s and 90s. And in those times it was predominantly the medical community that were misusing fentanyl because that's where it was available, particularly amongst uh, anaesthetists. And as, so as I've said, it can be bolused um, as an infusion. Um, it does not work orally particularly well because it has a high first pass metabolism. It's well absorbed across the gastrointestinal membrane, but when it passes through the liver on its way to the uh, central uh, vascular system, it's mainly metabolised, and so not much active drug actually reaches the central nervous system. I should qualify that by saying that if you uh, ingest enough fentanyl patches, there have been case reports of fentanyl toxicity after the ingestion of many patches. And then, of course, these other preparations. So the uh, patches allow analgesia for up to 72 hours. Clinical effects like any other opioid, respiratory, CNS, depression, euphoria, and death if it does occur is mainly due to respiratory depression and apnea. But fentanyl does have this unique property of causing chest wall rigidity that some of you may be aware of. And if it's given in large amounts very rapidly, then it can literally paralyze intercostal muscles. And even if ventilatory drive is still there, there's ventilatory paralysis from this chest wall rigidity. So that's another mechanism of death in the case of fentanyl. Adverse effects, again, like any other opioid, uh, notably fentanyl. We like fentanyl for many reasons. It's, it's, it's a cleaner drug than morphine. It has less histamine release, so it's, there's less itch or pruritus in our patients, but it does have uh, more respiratory depression. All right, what about fentanyl-related harm? The first thing, and I'm sure this has been mentioned today already, is limitations with data. Not everything is as it seems. This is not an industry that's well regulated where we have accountants sitting there and, and keeping track of supply and demand. And there's a lot of limitations in terms of analytics. So we haven't always had the ability to measure fentanyl in post-mortem samples, and particularly the new fentanyl analogues, uh, there's over 1,400 of them, may not be detectable, and maybe at such low concentrations that we don't actually find them. So a lot of the data that I present may just be the tip of the iceberg. Why is it misused? It's said to be a, a, an acceptable alternative to heroin. So the initial euphoria or high is not as intense, but it's got a longer duration in of the secondary relaxation and sedation phase. It's easy to manufacture. So if you go home tonight, look on the internet, you'll find the precursors and the equipment that you need to make fentanyl um, here in Australia. It's very potent. 
a smaller volume can be transported between jurisdictions across borders. You can sew it into the, the, um, the, the sleeves of your, of your clothing and still make a profit when you get uh, to the country you're transporting it to. And so it's used to adulterate other drugs and increase profit margins. It's important to remember that that's not only heroin. There's plenty of reports of stimulants, including cocaine, being adulterated with fentanyl and fentanyl analogues with disastrous consequences. And of course, counterfeit pharmaceuticals, particularly oxycontin, um, sorry, oxycodone, that uh, often in other places around the world may have fentanyl uh, mixed in with it. Sources in Australia, most of the fentanyl that's misused, we think comes from medicinal sources. That is, it's diverted, it's stealing grandma's fentanyl patches from her rest home um, and then extracting the fentanyl and using it. In North America and Europe, it's mainly illicitly manufactured fentanyl that's the problem. But you can see there that the, the wholesale cost even of medicinal fentanyl, 100 mics is a pretty nice dose, sorry, nice is not the word I should use, it's a, an effective dose, um, and uh, that's only one Australian dollar. The gel reservoirs, you can remove the fentanyl simply by putting a needle into the reservoir, pulling out the fentanyl and then using it. More recently, we've seen the matrix um, adhesive patches that have been produced in an effort to reduce fentanyl misuse, but even then you can just put them in a pot of boiling water and extract the fentanyl in the water and then use it from there. Lots of nicknames that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but many of you may have heard of Chinatown, China White in particular. What about fentanyl overdose? Well, the bottom line is that fentanyl is more dangerous than heroin and is more likely to produce an overdose, and that's for a number of reasons. It has a more rapid onset of action. It's a potent respiratory depressant. It, it produces this chest wall rigidity. And there was a good natural, not quite a natural experiment, but some uh, evidence published in 2015 from the Sydney Medically Supervised Injecting Centre. And even under supervision, people that were using fentanyl recreationally in that centre were more than twice as likely to experience an overdose that required medical intervention. And of course, fentanyl-related harm outside of Australia has been well publicised, particularly in North America. Many of you will be aware of the uh, problems in British Columbia, particularly in 2016 in Vancouver, with a large number of deaths. Uh, in that year, 1,500 deaths in Canada, mainly in that British Columbia area from fentanyl. Um, and that trend continues. But it's not only the, on the west coast of the US, this is data from New York City um, more recently. So this is deaths from all opioids, and you can see that overall the trend is rising, but the important thing to note is the, the dotted, or the, or the blue line, that shows that in 2017, somewhere between 50 and 60% of deaths, predominantly due to heroin, there was also an adulterant, namely fentanyl or a fentanyl analogue. The dotted line illustrates, even in New York City, the problems that they had with analysing those, those, those uh, fentanyls at that stage until 2016 and 2017. And in terms of the US as a whole, so in 2017, over 70,000 overdose deaths, nearly or over 40% of those were due to a synthetic opioid other than methadone. That means almost all of those deaths were due to fentanyl or a fentanyl analogue. That's quite a change from the 90s when it was heroin, and then more recently it's prescription opioid analgesics. Now it's fentanyls followed by prescription opioid analgesics and heroin. Fentanyl deaths in Victoria. I've, I've shown you the graph um, of national data. There's one publication of nine deaths, eight males and one female, occurring in the early part of 2015, uh, where heroin laced with fentanyl was responsible for those deaths. And I can tell you that in 2018, there's been 17 deaths where fentanyl has been found as a part of the uh, forensic process. 